Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman and colleagues, the next IRS commissioner is going to be in charge of administering a tax system that is broken in two. There is one set of rules in America for the cop on the beat or the worker on the factory line. Strict rules, no special loopholes, taxes come straight out of your paycheck. Then there's another set of rules in America for the high flyers. Under that system, with the right advice from costly advisors, you can effectively pay what you want when you want to. Mr. Reddick, nominated by the president to lead the IRS, seems to have made a career on giving advice to a lot of those high flyers. And the biggest policy challenge he's going to walk into, if confirmed as commissioner, is implementing the extremely complicated Trump tax law, which does a whole lot more for the high flyers and the well-connected than it does for everybody else. Given that fact, in my view, it's up to Mr. Reddick to demonstrate that if he's confirmed, he's going to work on behalf of all Americans, particularly hardworking middle-class families and the owners of the garages, the corner stores, the restaurants that make up in our communities. The guy on the street, as Mr. Reddick talked about in our meeting earlier this week. Now, on another matter, if you have studied the Nixon presidency, you know there is a dark history of the White House abusing the IRS for political purposes. It's going to be particularly important for Mr. Reddick to demonstrate his independence, given that Mr. Reddick did not fully disclose to the Finance Committee staff that the condos he owns and rents out in a Trump-branded and managed property. And on a matter the chairman, my good friend, touched on about leaks on this kind of discussion, I would only say that last night there was a memo uh, to all finance committee members coming from the chairman and myself making it clear that we wanted all members to understand what was at issue with these condos and they're being rented out in a Trump branded and managed property. Now, having said that, disclosing that information may not have been required by law. My view is it would have been a smart exercise of judgment. Certainly, if you want to eliminate any questions about appearances, you can sell the properties off. But setting aside even that financial relationship, committing to independence is critically important. This administration often seems to make tax decisions for political reasons rather than policy reasons, and that is a recipe for the kind of swampy corruption that makes people lose faith in institutions like the IRS. For example, it appears a policy regarding tax-favored opportunity zones was changed at the behest of a well-connected Republican donor in Nevada. It's a sign the administration has put itself in the business of picking economic favorites as a result of the tax law. This was a donor who wanted an accommodation, and he got it. When the state of Vermont sought a similar change, it was denied. There are also reports the Trump administration is going to introduce a new untested tax form that will make the experience of filing returns even more of a headache for many Americans, particularly senior citizens. When the debate closed and the new tax law passed, it turned out most Americans wouldn't be able to file on a postcard, contrary to what Republican sponsors had promised. The administration decided to go ahead and cram the same amount of tax math onto a smaller form anyway. That means many taxpayers are going to have to rifle through complicated new sets of instructions, attach multiple schedules, and in my view, it certainly is likely to generate more errors. The new forms are going to, for many taxpayers, be a setup to failure. One last point, Mr. Chairman. Recently, the Vice President said that the Johnson Amendment, which bars 501c3 tax-exempt organizations from campaigning for or against political candidates, quote, and I am quoting the Vice President of the United States here, 
will no longer be enforced under this administration. Now, I recognize that this is a priority of the far right, but people ought to understand it's a recipe for even more dark money going into our next political system. And I feel very strongly that the next IRS commissioner has got to be in charge of enforcing the laws on the books, despite the vice president's pledge that in effect that won't be the case. So running the IRS is a difficult job that involves managing tens of thousands of employees. Mr. Reddick has decades of experience. It will also be a concern, as he and I talked about, uh, that he doesn't have uh, extensive management experience. He's going to be asked about that, as he knows um, today. I appreciate Mr. Reddick's willingness to serve. I thank him for joining the committee. And uh, Mr. Chairman, as always, look forward to working with you. Well, thank you, Senator.